Let's talk a little bit about the OSGI architecture and kind of the different parts that go into what makes OSGI OSGI. We talked very briefly about how OSGI kind of works. Um, there are two documents or two technologies that are standardized that make OSGI what it is. The first one is going to be the core specification. The second one is going to be the compendium. With those two sort of specifications, a number of different companies and organizations have created their own implementation of OSGI. The two big ones that we pull from in the LifeRay world is Apache Felix and Eclipse Equinox. So if you kind of poke around within our code, you'll see hints and traces of that. When you look at some of the code that we're gonna be developing later in the LifeRay world, you're gonna see we're gonna pull some of our dependencies or we're gonna have dependencies on the core and the compendium of OSGI. When we look inside of the OSGI framework itself, there are five different parts that kind of make OSGI work the way it does. We've discussed some of these already, but let's go ahead and talk about these again. The first one is going to be bundles. We discuss bundles as the basic unit of modularity and the basic unit of deployment within the library world. In order to create a bundle, again, we need a manifest file and to compress or to, and to archive everything as a jar file. We can have Java classes, components, and so on within them. But ultimately, again, those are the two big things. They are self-contained, so whatever's within there can function on its own. They're very manageable as well as testable, right? We again share features amongst our different bundles in order to create our applications. The next part is the services layer. Right? The services layer is mainly composed of the service registry. Again, recall how the service registry is the one that is keeping track of all of the components and what they do. We ultimately ask the service registry to get us references of those components so that whatever services we're trying to call will be called properly all in thanks to the service registry. The lifecycle layer, this is the one who is responsible for ensuring the different parts of the lifecycle of our bundles, as well as, as well as our components are functioning the way that they should, right? It's up to the lifecycle layer to help us transition from one state to another. Again, recall the big three states that are of most importance to us, the installed, the resolved, and the active state. Again, those are gonna be the big three that we work with the lifecycle layer is the one responsible for taking a number of different commands such as start and stop and making sure that they do exactly what they do start and stop our bundles the module layer this is the one responsible for taking care of the modularity aspect of our bundles we talked about how bundles can share features the modules layer is the one who is responsible for saying hey this bundle is exporting a specific package this one is trying to import that package. Let's make that happen. That's all thanks in part to the module layer. And then finally, the last one here is the execution layer. This is the one who is responsible for ensuring that the Java runtime that we're running is going to be compatible with the whole OSGI framework. Alongside of that, a bundle can define what sort of execution environment it wants or in other words, what version of Java we require, whether at a bare minimum or this specific version. Let's summarize some of the big aspects, key concepts of the things that we've just talked about. So OSGI has two main specifications, that's the OSGI core and the OSGI compendium. The core specification specifies APIs, which are the bare minimum to run OSGI applications and which every framework implementation must implement. And finally, implementations may only implement selected parts of the compendium. So that wraps it up and I will see you in the next video.